In programming, it's easy to fall into certain habits that seem perfectly fine at first, but later lead to messy, hard to read and inefficient code. Let's look at some of the most common mistakes beginners make and how to avoid them. Mistake number one, avoid nested conditionals and unnecessary if statements. We've all been in a situation where we have to check multiple conditions. Each condition is depending on the outcome of the previous condition. Then it just feels natural to write nested if statements. But the problem is this violates the golden rule of programming. Avoid unnecessary complexity. For example, here we have a function that processes a payment. We first check if the user exists, then if the user is logged in, and then if the user has a specified payment method. Finally, we check whether the user has enough money and the item is in stock. While this code works, it looks absolutely terrifying. So let's simplify these conditions. For this, we use a technique called return early pattern. This means instead of nesting multiple conditions, we check for failure conditions first and then exit the function if any of them are met. For example, instead of checking if the user exists, we check if the user does not exist. Then we print a warning on the console and exit the function using an early return statement. We do the same thing for the other conditions as well. If none of these conditions are met, then we know that the payment was successful. So, using early return statements, you can avoid deeply nested logic and make your code more readable. Mistake number two, writing long functions that try to handle everything at once. While it may seem convenient to pack all the logic into one function, it goes against a fundamental programming principle, single responsibility. This means that each function should always have just one job. When functions handle too many different tasks, then they become hard to maintain, difficult to read, debug and are less usable. Let's look at an example where the function does too much. This add to do item function adds a new to do item, updates the user interface and saves the list into local storage all in one go. While this might work, the function is doing too much. It's handling data manipulation, DOM manipulation and storage management all at once. Why is this a problem? When you combine multiple responsibilities into one function, then the function becomes harder to manage. If one part of the function needs to change, you'll have to dig into the entire function, potentially affecting other parts of the function too. Moreover, it becomes harder to test and to reuse. A better approach is to break tasks into smaller, more focused functions. Each function should have one clear responsibility. A function that handles the data, a function that updates the UI, and a function that stores the data. Now the responsibilities are clearly separated. Mistake number three, misunderstanding how object references work. Many beginners get confused when it comes to how objects are handled, but it is very important to understand the difference between objects and primitive types. When you work with primitive types, such as numbers, strings or booleans, you're dealing with actual values. So when you assign one variable to another, you're basically making a copy of its value. But if you reassign the other variable, both will have different values. They are separate variables. Changing one does not affect the other. But with objects, this is different. Let's say we have an object that represents a student. Now we have another student object that has the same structure as student1. So we assign student1 to student2. Now what do you think will happen when I change the name of student2? You might expect that student1 and student2 are separate students, but they are not. Both variables point to the same object in memory. So when we change the name of the second student to Tom, it also changes for student1. When you assign one object to another variable, or pass it to a function, you're not creating a new object. Instead, you're creating a reference to the same object. Both variables point to the same memory location. So how can we avoid this? Simply use the spread operator. This creates a new object with the same properties. So now student1 and student2 are separate objects. Changing one does not affect the other, which is great. Understanding how references work will help you avoid unexpected changes to your data. Mistake number four, using too many event listeners instead of event delegation. When you attach event listeners to many elements on a page, it can cause performance issues. This is because each event listener uses some memory and processing power. The browser is constantly checking these event listeners and waiting for user interactions. For example, here we have to-do list items inside an unordered list. Then we add an event listener to each of those items. That way, when I click the to-do item, it is marked as completed. This code works all right. But the problem is, when we add more to-dos to the page, we have to add an event listener to all these new to-dos. A more efficient approach is to use event delegation, where you add one event listener to the parent element. So instead of attaching listeners to each to-do item, we attach a single event listener to the parent, in this case the unordered list. So we select the URL and attach a listener. This means we delegate the handling of an event to the parent instead of the actual element that was clicked. Inside the callback function, we can use an if statement to check if the to-do item was clicked. Simply use the target property from the event object to find out what exact element was clicked. Here we can check if the element selector matches the respective item. And then we complete the to-do. This works perfectly. 
So, event delegation allows you to write cleaner code and create fewer event listeners. Here, we only need one listener for the whole list, even if we add more items. Mistake number five, overusing for each when other array methods are more suitable. Many beginners stick to using for each because it is the array method they know best. In some cases, that's perfectly fine. However, there are times when using other array methods is a better choice. JavaScript provides several array methods that can help you write cleaner and more efficient code. Two of the most useful array methods are map and filter. Let's take a closer look at how they work. The map method returns a new array by applying a function to each item in the original array. It basically transforms each element based on the function you provide, returning a new array with the modified values. So at the end, you get a new array with the transformed items. In other words, you can use map whenever you want to transform data from one array into another. The filter method works a little different. It also returns a new array, similar to map, but here's a huge difference. Filter returns a new array that only includes the items that meet a certain condition. The condition we return inside the callback. So the filter method iterates over each element in the array. If the function returns true, then the current element will be included in the new array. If the function returns false, then that element is skipped. So the resulting array is likely going to be smaller than the original array. A common use case for the filter method is to create a filter for an online shop. If you want to learn more about the methods map, filter and reduce, then check out this video right here. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.